The second winning series is a unique sports program that probes into the often controversial world of professional and amateur sports. Sports View Today. Everybody and welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. And I'm Bob Page. Our sponsors in the program, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile in the Pontiac Waterford area. Uncle Al has moved just east of the Pontiac Airport, so his slogan, where the runway ends, the deals. We've got a lot of sponsors, so we'll go through them quickly. Fred Wetzel and the folks at TCOM Pagers, Jalapeno Pizza and Pasta, Pass, the Pro-Am Sports Systems, Sports Fans Journal. 11th, the 11th issue on the newsstands now. And, and uh, with the Tigers coming home uh, this weekend, they'll be able to buy it down there, the Tiger Stadium Souvenir Stands. Yes, too. and also uh, Pro-Am Sports is scheduled is right in here. Maxie's Main Street, Steve Pino and company in the heart of beautiful downtown Royal Oak. We have Joe Zimmer and all the gang out at Zim's Entertainment Center just off I-75 at the Baldwin Road exit. If you're on the way out to Pine Knob, so whatever. Chicago, we'll stop it. Don is Zimmer it. still coaching in Chicago? No, that's Zimmer's Don still. Zimmer. We've discussed him before. And also we have one of our newest sponsors, uh, George Gorno and uh, all the people down at Gorno Ford. All the Ford. people? Yes. Gorno Ford. People. Well, yeah. The five-star Ford people. dealer. Where's all the people? At well the worth the drive to the Don River area from anywhere in Metro Detroit. Detroit Porno Ford. Our guest in the program today, longtime friend of ours, one of the few friends Ron Cameron Swayze still counts in this town, Paul Yokish. You're not exactly now, uh, Mr. <laughs> now Mr. The Popularity. Former Michigan wide receiver, fifth round draft choice of the San Francisco 49ers, and of course, I, of course, I think one of the outstanding all around athletes that our area has produced in a long time. He's a great basketball player at Birmingham Brother Rice. And speaking of all around athletes, we commented briefly the last program we did about Bo Jackson and these earhead comments he's making about coming to the uh, Los Angeles Raiders. I mean, how, you know, how, how the Raiders are going to feel about having this kid coming in saying it's a hobby. And of course, the Kansas City Royals, who all have these clauses in their contracts, saying they can't go skydiving, they can't do this, and here's Jackson playing football. Yeah. Ron, this is an immature young man. What happens is, did you read the real story of what happened? Mm -hmm. He apparently doesn't like Billy Gardner, the new manager. He got along great with Hauser, but not Gardner. Doesn't like the way Gardner uses him. After a recent game in a critical situation, Gardner pinch hit for Bo Jackson. And that's understandable because as talented an athlete as he is, he still is learning the game of baseball, strikes out oh, too sure. much. Oh, sure. Way too much. He struck out uh, almost half the time. Bo Jackson went into the locker room and cleaned out his locker. Cleaned out his locker after Gardner pinch hit for him. And the people said, what, what's wrong? Where are you going? He says, I quit. I've had it with baseball. I'm going to go play football. The Royals owner just happened to be coming through the locker room and saw him and said, Bo, Bo, you can't do this to us. Don't worry, Bo. We'll make it up to you. We'll let you sure. play football, Pampered too. Pampered athletes. Pampered athletes. They coddle these guys? It's unbelievable. Now, the other comment I had about the Bo Jackson situation is this. We've talked about professional football organizations. We've talked about winners. Don Shula, Chuck Knoll, Landry guys like this. And we've talked about losers. Bill Ford, Russ Thomas, the Lions. The same teams win, the same teams lose every year. For the most part, yeah. Al Davis, one of the most brilliant men in sports. You are not going to get much, generally speaking, in the NFL draft when you get down to the later rounds. No. How was, it that, round. how was it that Al Davis this year just had the foresight to think, you know, why not expend a seventh round draft choice on Bo Jackson? It's not a big deal, uh, choice-wise. What if we can get the kid to play football? Now, how come they can't think of that out in Pontiac? How come the Lions can't do something like that? You just said it, winners and losers. How come the Lions couldn't draft winners Herschel Walker in the fifth round as a Dallas winners Cup? Winners and losers. You better believe it. Winners and losers. And that's another reason I just don't think the Lions are ever going to win, as I've said before. Well, winners, when Russ Thomas got you fired for those comments you said at another radio station, in town? That, was back in the, that was back in the dark ages. That was back in the dark uh, ages. Speaking of winners and losers, Steve Howe, uh, a young man who has lost how many times now in terms of cocaine abuse, has signed with Three the Texas Three cocaine Rangers. shots ago, you were, pick, uh, you were saying the Tigers should Kid sign can him. obviously still pitch. Oh, he had a great year in the Mexican League. The, the few innings he pitched, I think in 24 innings, he gave up four hits. 
And again, Mexican, of course, he was pay, well, facing Julio Pitching against Willie Aikens before he had his problem. Julio Becker and right. Jack Pierce and people like now, that. Now, you can't tell me that Julio Becker yes, is still playing. Yes, I think he is still. Is that right? He's still playing. And, you, and now you're going to tell me that Julio Navarro is still pitching. No, no, Navarro <laughs> retired last year at the age of 52. <laughs> I see. By the way, speaking of individuals, I got a message for you. Lance and Joseph, you set up an appointment for yourself in a couple days. But, and for Gail. But, but, right. but you know, for yourself, you set up the appointment. And, and you know, for, but it has to change, though. Oh, okay. The reason being, they told me at Lance and Joseph's, the lady that handles the gray hair, they said, you've got another two weeks before it appears again. You don't have to come now so you can change it. The Lance and You're the expert on that subject. The gray hair, two weeks. We were talking winners and losers. The loser of last week somehow escaped mention on this program of ours, and this is this idiot, this criminal. This, well, I can't call him anymore. You better not. Yeah, You'll this get sued. television after all. The show's already on shaky grounds. Dana Kirk. Oh the former Memphis State basketball coach. This is a guy that allegedly, while running his camp, was given free pop by the Coca-Cola company, turned around and sold it at a dollar a drink to the kids. Mm -hmm. Little kids paying whatever they're paying to attend his basketball camp. He kept $2,000 for himself that was intended for two former assistant coaches and then took $1,500, allegedly, of the kids' payments and used it to cover gambling debts. He's already been indicted the FBI is involved here on charges of income tax evasion, filing false tax returns, intimidating grand jury witnesses, secretly accepting money for appearances at basketball tournaments. It's unbelievable. It really is, Ronnie. And I think one of, some, one of the things that people don't realize about college basketball And they got one of the all-time greats over there, didn't they? William Bedford's with the Pistons now. We talk about that ought to be fun too. these coaches who are driven to, to win, guys like Dana Kirk. Well, Frieder we see that with, although Frieder certainly is not guilty of anything oh, not like at, this. No, not at all. But, but, but you see what I'm saying, they're driven to win. And I think one of the public doesn't understand why they are. There are tremendous sums of money to be made by big-time college basketball coaches. Sure. You may hear that so-and-so has a salary of 50 grand a year. Oh, we talk about the TV shows, the We're talking about the, the camps, camps and all it's that scary stuff. how much oh, money these guys make. It really is. And, and I just love Freeze. Few programs don't cheat, they don't I, need to cheat. My summer is never complete without some quotes from Freeze. And Jim Spadafore in the news did a little piece last week. Did you see it? When the Big Ten basketball schedule was announced for the coming year. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is Freeder's non-conference schedule coming up this year before the big, big names on there. Some big names. He opens December 2nd against Bowling Green. Then he really has to go up against it versus Central Michigan. It gets worse. Western Michigan. Then it's the awesome power from Austin P. Then somehow Frieder will have to cope with Eastern Michigan, all these games at home, of course. Then it's Northern Michigan coming to town, priming Michigan for the big one December 21st against Grambling State. That's his non-conference schedule. Says Frieder, and I quote, this is a very difficult schedule for a young team. Then you just see what he does in the Big Ten. He opens up at on the road at Northwestern. Quote, the worst thing you can do in the conference is open up at Northwestern. <laughs> this guy, as much as I love Frieder, this guy just is covering his rear end from the moment he puts his foot out of bed in the morning, the moment he wakes up. It's just amazing. He doesn't go to bed. And speaking of schedule, a couple more things before we get to Paul Yogesh I want to comment about. Uh, uh, again, two nice people that I like very much, Brad Kinsman and Don Seco at Detroit. Are they trying to create a second-rate basketball power over there? Are they happy about running? Did you see their schedule? Their schedule's out there. Now, they are going to play at Michigan State. They've got North Carolina A&T, Toledo, Nebraska. These, are home, these are home games. Not always. Uh, Usually. Wisconsin, Green Bay, Bradley, Grand Valley State. John Carroll, Dayton, which is good, Tough team. Central Michigan, and, o and, and Oakland, uh, Oakland University. Watch out for the Oakland Now, team. look, this is, a, this is a major market. It's a very tough market for the sports dollar. Brad and Don, how are you going to get the casual sports fan in Detroit to put out any money to come see Wisconsin Green Bay, Oakland University, Grand Valley State, North Carolina a and I don't understand what they're doing. Yeah, I just don't understand what they're doing. I really don't. And uh, while we tape this program, the New York Knicks don't have a coach still. They may have signed one. Larry Brown. And it took him. No, he now says he's not interested in Yeah, I, I saw that in the paper. And paper. they finally got Al Bianchi. Larry Brown's been bouncing around. What's, Al what's, what's the problem with the Knicks? Why can't man. they get anybody to take these jobs? I think that the pressure cooker in New York is just too much to handle, although the team, is, the team has some potential over there. Anytime you have a Patrick Ewing on the ball club, and even the, the, the big sleepwalker, Cartwright, you've still got some potential there. And whoever takes over is going to improve the team in the standings, so I don't see why it's that difficult of a job to take. But the pressure in New York in the long run is just too much to bear. I think the pressure of dealing with the New York Knicks announcers is very difficult, too. Remember that story? They had Bob Hill on, and the, and the post. This is the New York Knicks, and then we yeah. tell this in the show. The New York Knicks' own broadcaster, ladies and gentlemen, on the post-game radio show, 
late in the season, Bob Hill was nice enough after a difficult loss to come over. And this is the assistant coach who didn't ask for the job. He was given it on an interim basis. And the first question the Knicks own announcer says, so Bob, where are you going to be coaching next year? That's brutal. Yeah. Really tough. Of course, Ron is brutal too. But you've managed to survive in this market. I've survived years. a long and time. And you still have, as I say, at least four friends at last count. One of, whom, one of whom, one of whom is actually surviving. on the program today. Paul Yokish, the former Michigan wide receiver, now with the San Francisco 49ers, is here, and we'll be back to talk with him. They're wrong, Lance and Jones. I see a piece of gray hair coming up Never, now. Then not any. Isn't it a, the Grecian formula is taking. They its colored effect. your hair over there. Will they took a, They did a nice job of getting the gray out of place. Marvelous. That's the most important. You ought to go there too in Southfield. Are they paying to be in this program? Let's uh, go to the people who are paying. Damn it. Well, you all do trade. Up. All your fishes. We are about to embark on a great crusade. The eyes of the world are upon us. Our mission, crush the enemy before they crush us. Like America, Uncle Al will come through for you, crushing prices on Oldsmobiles and GMC trucks. Say hello, America. Sayonara, imports. Tanks, but no tanks to imports. Visit Uncle Al's giant new dealership on M59 just east of the Pontiac Airport. Where the runway ends, the deals begin. Jalapeno Pizza is a great place to eat. Hi, two for non smoking, please. Right this way. Wow, look at all this food. A two pound wet burrito, a 16 ounce porterhouse, and there's pasta too. But did you see the daily specials? What a deal for $6.25. See, didn't I tell you jalapeno pizza and pasta is a great place to eat? Jalapeno pizza and pasta on Cohen Road across from Westland Mall. I'm sorry, she's out of the office for the day and there's no way to contact her. With well, a pager from TCOM, you could contact her anytime. I know it's an emergency, but it's out of the building now. May I call you later? With Motorola pagers from TCOM, you can deal with emergencies now. I'm sorry, our delivery man is on call right now. We won't be able to help you till tomorrow. Hi, my name is Fred Wetzel with TCOM Paging. If these problems seem familiar to you, then you need a TCOM pager. You'd be surprised how affordable they are. Probably wonder how you've done without one. Give us a call at 559-6826. Zim's just off I-75 between the Silver Dome and Pine Knob is rapidly becoming one of southeastern Michigan's premier entertainment centers. Whether it's bowling, video games, and Zim's huge arcade or outdoor sports, Zim's boasts two of the finest softball facilities going, available for your league or tournament. And even if you don't play at Zim's, you can play after the game at Club Zim's. Drink specials nightly, live entertainment, and dancing. Hi. I'm Joe Zimmer. I'd like to invite each and every one of you to come out and see us at Zim's Spirits and Eatery, our bowling center, and our new softball facility. Look forward to seeing you. We're back on Sports View with Paul Jokic, ex-Michigan uh, wide receiver now in the NFL with the San Francisco 49ers, and you're in a pretty good position right now due to the injury to Dwight Clark and everything. And First of all, I thought you should have been picked before the fifth round. Uh, at your size and athletic ability and everything else, and well, the position you play, yeah. you should have been in the first couple rounds, I felt. Yeah. Well, there's two ways of looking at that, Ron. You can say that uh, being drafted in the first round is really nice, but being not being drafted at all could be uh, the other side of the coin. Yes. So, um, of course, I had that injury last year, and I missed half the season practically, and that hurt my... Um, and when you did play, you weren't at 100%. No, I was never 100%. Um, so, you know, I made the best of it, and uh, I think I'm going to decent situation now. It may be the best situation in the NFL for you right now, right? Well, that remains to be seen. I won't uh, say anything yet. Until but this is a young man who lives five minutes from the Silver Dome. I mean, it could have been a nightmare, couldn't it? The Lions could have drafted him, right? <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have been all that bad. You know, I've, I've grown up around here. I, in fact, in their backyard less than yeah, a mile Yeah, in Clarkston. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, so, you know. Paul, we talked last year uh, when you were hurt with the, with the groin injury. Um, were you bitter at all about the way that was handled up in Ann Arbor? Did you feel that the coaching staff made you play when you weren't healthy enough to play and you risked potentially serious and permanent damage as a result? Well, I never realized at the start when I did it um, a year ago, when, um, last week, I believe it was, um, exactly how seriously I hurt it. Um, I, uh, I sought treatment for it at the never realized what was about to take place. And I don't, I don't think that the coaching staff uh, pressured me into playing. I think if it was to the point where it was too bad for me to go, I wouldn't go. I didn't uh, know at the time what was going to happen. I went ahead and played anyway, 
and it progressively you, got worse. You shouldn't have played, though. No, I shouldn't. I mean, they said. And, and, don't, and don't they, Paul? I mean, and I don't want to so much beat up Bo's staff, but I think a lot of college coaches in general. Are you ready? Almost, you ready? They, they, yeah, they, 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 they almost, they almost you question the your masculinity. Oh, well, what do you mean you're not ready to play? You know, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Stuff like that. Almost to the point where, you know, they know more than you what your breaking point is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's, that's the business that they're in. And, they and it is to, a business, ladies and gentlemen. A lot, of times, a lot of times when a kid is hurt, um, he may milk an injury a couple of days more than what he should, and the coaches take a position where we have to push him into a, a, a quicker, quicker um, recovery time. In all fairness to the coaches, you got a lot of malcontents out there today. You got a lot of, a lot of athletes, like like, like Lou Whitter, for example, gets tired. Oh, no one play and all that stuff like that. Uh -huh. So you really got to know it's really tough. I think it's tougher for coaches to look inside people today because there are very few quality people out there you can look inside. That's true. Huh? But the, but then you look at Paul's close friend, a kid like Mike Reinhold, and this is oh, now this is the and the oh. other end of the spectrum who had that oh. horrible Achilles tendon and never should have attempted to come back and blew it out again because he insisted upon trying to make himself ready to play in the Rose Bowl. And now look at him. Now look at the situation. That was a shame. He, uh, what a what a great guy though. Oh. Yeah, I know him really well. He's mm -hmm. my roommate, of course. Uh, and then he had another problem. Now two years ago, that he snapped his femur in half up in Minneapolis and. Uh, then he turns around and rips his Achilles twice. Yeah, and that's that's bad luck. Like I was telling you, you know, being drafted in the fifth round, you know, hey, what? What's and then that? now he had another problem after that that he just. Well, no, my like point is, being drafted in the fifth round in comparison oh. to his Achilles, are sure. And not only that, luck, but the toughest situation know. of all, the long problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you had further difficulty with the pros, in that uh, I think most fans are aware that the pros come around to the college campuses, the scouts, and they time these kids and work them out. They made you run a 40-yard dash this spring when you weren't physically capable. You ran a 4-7. As a result, the pros looked at that. They drafted you in the fifth round. That cost you how much money? How much money do you figure you lost because I of that? I can't estimate. I, I figure it cost me a few dollars. A couple hundred thousand? I don't know. Maybe. Well, he can make up for it, though, when he gets in there. Maybe. But the, the, but the situation is it might have cost you a chance at a number one draft pick. Sure. Being awesome. a number one draft choice. Absolutely. You know, first round draft pick. How do, how do you look back at your career at Michigan? You went there as a basketball player. You right. refused to play football at first. Did you make some mistakes along the way? Um, no question. I don't think so. I think I, I, I did what I wanted to do, and, and uh, I played the cards that were dealt, were dealt to me. I started out playing basketball, as you know, and it didn't work out. It, what happened was that I ended up, make a long story short, I dislocated this knuckle, and they had to operate it, put it back in place. and. I was out six weeks after that. And before that, I was working with the starting lineup. And uh, after that, I never really caught up. And after that the season, I decided to uh, transfer to football. OK, tell it like it really is, though. The fact is, you're coming out of high school. You've had a lot of people, me including, just jumping all over before you, not criticizing your basketball ability, but saying, you have a chance to be a number one draft choice. You've got to play football, right or wrong. Yeah, but I did what I yeah. wanted to do. Yeah, but but the thing—that's the whole key, Ron. That's about being happy, you know. Yeah, but the thing is, you knew you did it. You admitted to me later that you did it to shut people like me up because hey, we wanted to prove to people no. that you could play basketball. Now, that, that was part of it. That might have had something to do with yes, it. Yes, it did. The most important thing is that you're happy, right? Sure. All I want to know. That's what I did. All I want to know is if you can go out to lunch with me when we're finished taping the program because I want you to tell me how to shut Ron Cameron up. I've been sure. trying for more than three years without. Okay. Success. Nobody I has take been my successful. Cap off Nor to nobody will shut be this successful guy up. either. We're going to go to a commercial break. That I was his friend when I was over there sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to a commercial break. We There's got a lot for you. Taping you in action at Michigan. We'll take a look at that and talk about it. You got a couple minutes or a Paul Yokish right after this time. <laughs> It's me again. In the past, you've heard a number of people give reasons why they come to Maxis. Maybe you're not yet convinced. Let's ask a few more. I come to Maxis for the fine selection of wine, the great pickles, and the owner, Steve Pino, owes me $14.50. I come to Maxis because the food is great. The hors d'oeuvres, sensational. It doesn't cost a lot of bread. And most important of all, Steve, the owner, is buying. For the selection of fine wines, of course. Mainly, I come to Maxis because Ron Cameron doesn't come here. Of course, there are other reasons why you should be coming to Maxi's. On Sunday nights, we feature the Maxi Jam with some of the best rock and rollers this area has to offer. Every Tuesday and Saturday, we have classics on video with Elmar. Of course, we always have our outdoor cafe open for your fun and enjoyment. And one day, Bill Sparks might show up. 
Since 1939, Gorno Ford has been one of the most trusted names in Metro Detroit, a 16-time winner of Ford's highest award for excellence in service. And service is where you start at Gorno. Honest, hassle-free, reliable service at the lowest prices in Southeast Michigan. But Gorno Ford is much more. Gorno's Down River's biggest truck dealer, used cars and leasing, and the finest selection of 87 Fords going, over 500 new and used. Gorno Ford Woodhaven, the five-star name you've trusted for almost 50 years. We're back on Sports View. Oh, no, now you're going to do your commercial. After I say we're don't back Don't you want to do your Sports commercial View? if you don't want to? And we want them to just shut up. We're going to be talking with Paul Yokish in just a moment. But first, Sports Fans Journal I gotta is remind going to do a strong. Commercial. Uh -huh. And we want you to be one of the subscribers. If you're a true sports fan, you don't like stats and box scores and things like that, two weeks old like other publications, this is for you. Good hardening sports and good human interest sports from people that know what they're writing about. Denny McLean is still writing from his jail cell. Now, if you'd like to subscribe for a year, all you have to do is send a $15 check or money order made payable to Sports Fans Journal and send to this address, Sports Fans Journal, P.O. Box 12170, Birmingham, Michigan, 48012. If you'd like to call for more information, that phone number, 350-3530. Now, each month you be uh, reading Denny McLean right from his jail cell exclusive columns. They write exclusively for this paper. Mike Downey, Eli Zarin, George Allen, Dick Vitale, Don Cherry, Bob Feller, Larry King, Sonny Elliott, Ray Lane, Ernie Harwell, George Cal, Emmanuel Stewart, and a whole bunch more. We got uh, George Icorn, we've got George Blaha writing, <laughs> Vince Doyle, and the oldest timer of all is Bob Page is writing, although he pays to write for Sports <laughs> Fans Journal. So you want to stop by your local newsstand and book store or Tiger Stadium souvenir stand to pick it up, or you can uh, call this number for more information, 350-3530. Sports Fans Journal. And we're ahead. back on Sports View today, and our guest is now former Michigan White Ice. This seems like guest I was watching you play basketball at Birmingham Brother Ice. I can't believe it's over already. And I have it's been to ask five, you, six years ago. You I don't know forget that. that one year he said. I got a good news, bad news story for you on the Rose Bowl this last year. The bad news is that, as usual, I had egg all over my face because I actually thought Michigan was going to win. The good news is I wasn't totally stupid. I didn't bet on you guys. What happened? Why can't Bowl win the Rose Bowl? I don't understand. We started out with a, with a, a great drive. We drove down the field and scored on a two-point conversion, took an 8-0 lead and then uh, from that moment on we just seemed like the, their defense stifled us. Offensive line they were criticizing. Everybody said they let down. Yeah, well, well I think uh, people don't realize that Arizona State was better than... Uh, they were bigger up front yeah. too, weren't they? But they Paul, they it's, always up up front it's always something though, Paul. This year you can say, well, the offensive line... But why is it that Bo can never win the Rose Bowl, it seems? I don't have an answer. If I, if I did, I'd be in a position that he's in. Mm -hmm. What kind of relationship do you have with him? Uh, Bo is a very honest man. He's, uh, he's, I respect him, and, and you need that to have a player-coach relationship. So I think, like I said, that's a basis of a relationship. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I respect him enough to recommend him that my brother go there. Your brother Dan. Yeah, and he's, a star. he's staying uh, in the Paul same house that you did, so that, that could be a total disaster. Now he's a Paul the type of people live there. <laughs> he's no, a I'm Paul Yokish clone, isn't he? He's about six. He's eight his eight brother, also? for God's sakes. But he's also about six eight and a wide yeah. receiver. Yeah, he's he? about six six and a half, uh -huh. and. Uh, he, he's like my clone. He runs just like I do. We're going to take a look and see how you run here on camera. And I found very few highlights of you from this last year. Well, there was very few to see. See you playing against the, Notre Dame in the opening game because, of the season. Because he was hurt. You were healthy for the Notre Dame game, weren't you? I was. I was struggled through that game. Oh, were you? To Even be then, quite honest, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And I think, again, that any day now, we're going to be looking at highlights of Paul Yoke. Yes, but right now, the, the Paul, uh, if you had to do it there all over again. There you are. Here's Jimmy Harbaugh you? rolling out. We'll see Paul catching the sidelines. Would you uh, have gone to Michigan if you had to do it all over again and play football? Because oh, yeah. you had other choices over Michigan as far as football goes. I don't went to Michigan. What about your other choices that you were yeah. thinking of if you were going to play football? What about, what did you? You were talking about other choices. You were going to go to Kentucky. That was one of the teams. That was for basketball. Yeah. Notre Dame was a possibility. Now, you see, also, Paul could have been a great defensive player. We saw him catching passes right there. This is the famous John Colasar touchdown against Ohio State two years ago that, right, that uh, wrapped the game up. And watch Jokish, 84, come flying right out of the bottom of your picture and tackle John Colasar and bring him, wrestle him to the ground. Did you hurt the kid? Oh, no. He said he was out of air, so I had to play him off. <laughs> you, you've always been full of air, so that's it. No. I want to ask you about Jimmy <laughs> Harbaugh, feather, you know, who was yeah. uh, running off the field right there. In my mind, as much as I like Ricky Leach, as you know, the greatest quarterback in Michigan history. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? What kind of kid is Jim Harbaugh? Um, you're asking me if Jim Harbaugh is the greatest quarterback mm -hmm. in Michigan. That's, I, I can't answer that, but, you know, obviously he's a great quarterback. He had a great career at Michigan. He's a, 
a great story coming out of high school and didn't get all the publicity that maybe some other quarterbacks did had gotten. Um, and fared well at Michigan. Now he's drafted by the Chicago Bears, number one draft pick. Mm -hmm. I think he's got a great future. I, if I was picking a team, I'd want him on my team yeah. because there isn't anyone who competes any harder than Jim Harbaugh. Now he has a chance to start in Chicago this year. The way the talk is, you have a chance to start in San Francisco, don't you? Well, that, yeah, that's a possibility, but you never know. But what is the situation with the wide receiver, of course? Clark the situation is Dwight Clark just uh, recently uh, came off of uh, crutches, and th th they're saying that he'll be back mid-season and possible retirement, and you hear those kind of things. Yeah. But uh, Doesn't yeah. look like he would be ready for the start of the year then, does it? I don't think so, but then I'm not a, a trainer. And Bill Walsh doesn't want you to play tight end. He's told you to report at 220. Right around 220. Wide receiver. I'm about 228. And you've got to be happy with that, don't you? I am. That's my, I think that's my natural position, and, and time will tell A lot of people wouldn't think so. We I gotta, think it is. We've got to get to that commercial, but I want to ask you one final thing. I, you've been around a living legend in Bo Schembechler, mm -hmm. and yet still, when you sit in the office across from Bill Walsh, and when you go out in the field and there's Joe Montana throwing your passes, do you have to pinch yourself? Well, the first couple of days I did, uh, running out there catching Montana's passes and young, um, it took me a couple of days to get over it. Now it's second nature, and I don't really think twice mm -hmm. about it. What kind of guy was Montana? Was he nice to you? He's a really nice guy. He didn't uh, say a whole whole lot at the start. Now he's talking to me a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I thought Steve Young was really um, open. Oh nice. yeah, it's the big right. they brought they got, uh, for He almost had Harbaugh over there because of, uh, San Francisco was really high on Harbaugh, and then they went out and dread and got Steve Young in the trade. They but came he, in to look at Jim. They did. They called him. <laughs> Well, and I, uh, you know, caught for Jim, and I uh -huh. guess they... They liked what they saw on the other end. Well, thank goodness Steve Young's there. You can borrow some of that $40 million he got to play in the USFL and buy Did yourself a house, because that's what you need, $40 million bucks to buy a house in the San Francisco area these days. Yeah, we'll close it out with Paul Yokish right after this. In just two and a half years, Dugan's Irish Pub has become one of the hottest spots on the North Woodward Strip. Come on inside and I'll tell you why. You start out with a famous Big Chief Burger, an institution in Royal Oak since 1954. Dugan's has the cheapest drinks in Metro Detroit. Specials every night, not to mention the best looking waitresses serving those drinks. We've got oldies on the jukebox all the time in a great casual atmosphere to meet your friends. So come on out to Dugan's on Woodward, just north of 13 Mile, and have a bite of nostalgia. The hardest thing about coming to the Brass Bed and Leather Gallery is making up your mind. We have over 150 brass beds, iron beds, day beds with trundles, sofas, sectionals, office chairs, all under one roof. When you come in here, you don't see catalogs. You see the actual piece on display. That's real important. You see it, you feel it, you touch it, you take it home with you, we deliver it to you. We carry quality pieces, name brands only, at low, low discount prices. We're open seven days a week. Please come and see us. The 1987 Major League Baseball season is in full swing. And now, you can track every team all summer long by tuning to the Pennant Chase on Pats. Join host Larry Osterman each week as he takes a look at the Majors Divisional Races, the American League and National League Players of the Week, as well as exclusive up-close interviews with the game's biggest stars. To stay up to date with all the happenings in and around the world of baseball, join us every week for the Pennant Chase on Michigan's cable home of the Tigers, Pats. We're out of time on Sports View today, and by now you've heard enough of Ron Cameron anyway, so we just want to thank our sponsors and the program. Yes, Ronnie, go ahead. Right here, Sports, Sports Fans, fans Journal. Going strong, Camera over here, there we go. That's fine. I want to thank uh, George Gorno and the folks down the river at Gorno yes. Ford, the five-star Ford dealer. Joe Zimmer and the gang out at Zim's Entertainment Center. Maxie's Main Street, past the Pro-Am Sports Systems. Jalapeno Pizza and Pasta, across from the Westland Mall. Fred Wetzel and the folks at T-Com Pagers, and of course, Uncle Al sends along this t-shirt your girlfriend could at least uh, fit into it. No more Bob Page. You can hear Ron Cameron on the radio, WCAR, the Bob AM 1090, Josh Wednesday afternoon, 4 to 5, and my show still runs every morning on a station that Ron's much too old to listen to, but it's Paul Yokish's favorite. And you're favorite. much too old to be at. Paul, maybe. Paul Yokish's no favorite radio station. That. WRIF, 630, 730, and 830, 101.1 FM. Thanks, Paul. Good luck to you in San Francisco. which one of you guys is more controversial. <laughs> Doesn't take much to figure out which one is right or that does it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.